What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another edition of Dream Firm Spotlight. My name is Tyler Clark, co-founder of Dream Firms, where we believe you should wake up to a hyper-profitable accounting firm. And what I'd like to cover with you today is the five ways to grow your accounting firm fast. And the reason I know these ways to grow your firm fast is I was able to add multiple six figures of revenue to my accounting firm without referrals, although we're going to talk about the importance of those as a part of these five. And I also am a, a leader of a community of literally hundreds of entrepreneurial accountants to help them to implement these strategies and even more. So we've got a lot of context to be able to uh, say that not only are these fast, but the best news of all is they're also free. So if you like free and fast and you want to grow your accounting firm, I think you're going to enjoy these five strategies. So number one is uh, unfortunately a problem that we've got to inverse. So I can't begin to tell you the number of firms that we speak to on a weekly basis. And when we start to analyze their own financials and what's going on with their accounting firms, oftentimes they will have tens of thousands of dollars in accounts receivable that are aged well beyond 90 days. And that's heartbreaking to them. And it's tough for us because oftentimes they need that capital to be able to invest in the future growth of the business and really accelerate it. So the first strategy is collect the money you're owed. And I know that sounds like common sense, but it's oftentimes having hard conversations that we've been pushing off for too long that allows us to get closure, which is either they're going to pay or you got to remove them from the context of a professional relationship with your firm, because at a certain point, it's just quite frankly theft. <laughs> so if we're working with thieves, we're not going to have a really profitable firm. We're going to be constantly wasting additional time, energy, and they're just going to continue to suck the life out of your business, not only the profitability. So the sooner we do away with that, the better, but we want to make an earnest attempt to collect that in full as much as possible and then sever the relationship. So number one is please collect the money that you are owed. It's literally like finding money. You've already done the work. You may as well put in the extra 10% of effort to either sever the relationship or ideally collect that cash. Number two, another story. Uh, so earlier this week, I had a, uh, a group call and a client comes on and, and he shares uh, an experience where He's working part-time right now as a contractor as he's building up his own client base and he's working with a bookkeeper and they pay him and that bookkeeper essentially was kind of mad. <laughs> and he was like, what, what's wrong? Why are, you, why are you mad? And she said, I was just looking at a client's financials and I saw that they're working with another accounting firm. And he's like, that's odd. What are they buying? Well, they're buying a lot more from them than they are from us. And he's like, well, what are they buying? And she's like, well, it seems like they're buying some sort of fractional CFO service, which we could easily offer. And he's like, well, how much are they paying for it? And she's like 3000 a month, which was significantly more than she was getting paid for the bookkeeping. She's like, they're just doing some like, you know, coaching and financial analysis and we could do that. And in the back of his mind, he's like, well, why, why didn't you offer it? And he, of course, didn't say that. But the second fastest way to grow your firm, and I'm going to put this into like two buckets, 2A and 2B, so is upselling your existing client base. I find many of our clients have worked very hard to fine hone their skills to increase their ability to do tax planning, fractional CFO services like the example I just gave, or offer bill pay. And when I ask them what percentage of their clients are buying these newly refined services, oftentimes the answer is none. And I go, but why? I mean, surely some percentage of your client base would benefit from this. Why is no one buying it? Oh, I haven't told them about it. Yet. I haven't asked them about it. And I'm like, oh, maybe, maybe we can just talk to them and offer it because it literally costs zero dollars to do it and is an immediate boost to your firm. So again, that's the second way, but as a part of like 2A and 2B of upsell your existing clients, upselling is usually referred to offering a new service, but raising rates on existing services is also equally as important. And I, I'll tell you another horror story I had with a client from about uh, two years ago. And it, it, it was a horror story, but of course we, we turned it around. Uh, but 
million dollar firm. And a lot of people look at the million dollar seven figure firm as a tremendous milestone. And it absolutely is. And a lot of firm owners will brag that they're at seven figures. And many times they have the right to brag about that. But the flip side of that is you don't really know what's going on inside of that business. And when I was working with this client, he very bluntly told me, we have to take bank loans to cover our expenses. And I said, whoa, whoa, whoa you're, you're, you're doing over seven figures. I said, what's, what, well, what's going on here? I mean, you must have a lot of unprofitable accounts. And so I, when was the last time you raised prices on, on your clients? And he's, he said, Tyler, we've never raised prices on our clients. And I was like, you've been in business for over 20 years. What do you mean? You've been losing money to inflation for two decades? Yes, Tyler, that's what I mean. And I, and I was like, okay, hold the phone. We're not doing it. We're not, there's no point in bringing in new clients into a leaky ship. We're, we can't do it. This thing is go, I would rather burn this firm to the ground and start from zero. But like the truth is, is that's not what, what's going to happen. And yes, when he went through that painful process, it's not that painful. It feels very painful in the first phone call, but then it feels really good when you get the price increases, you have the profitability, and you really actually end up pruning the client base, which frees up your staff to keep the clients that you actually want to keep. It works out really well. Uh, again, a lot of the fears that come along from that are completely unfounded. And I think he would have ended up being closer to an eight-figure firm if he had actually just been raising prices every year. We really need to. So again, just for clarity here, number one, collect the money you're owed, literally completely free. Upsell your existing clients, completely free to do, and raise prices on existing clients. It's still kind of part of point two here. And again, just for context, uh, like this is what we do, okay? Like we literally help firms to do these simple things. We give them scripts, we give them uh, all sorts of technology, we give them all the advantages that they need to make this process a lot easier and a whole lot more. And so if you're interested in being able to grow your firm faster than you currently are with not just free techniques, but also a little bit of some paid stuff, let us know uh, either in the comments, you can click the link, go to dreamfirms.com and obviously apply for the opportunity to uh, check out the Create Your Dream Firm program. So third one, okay. This is what we teach inside of Igniter, okay. It's 67 bucks, but for all my people checking this out, tapping your existing network is the easiest and fastest way to get new clients, okay? We haven't talked about getting any new clients yet. We just talked about the existing clients you have. New clients is usually just as a matter of just like, or tapping the mouse and showing up in their inbox, DMs, and just saying like, hey, we've known each other from college, work, family relations, whatever. They already know you. And just, do you need help? with thing that you do? Do you know someone who needs help with thing that I do? You do that once a quarter and you end up with a lot of money, just being blunt. There is a shortage of accountants. There are people who are literally just like turning the lights off on their firm and saying goodbye. They're not even trying to sell it. They're just retiring and like disappearing into the night. So like, again, there's plenty of work out there if we're just willing to step a tiny, tiny bit outside of our comfort zone and say hello to the people who already know us and be like, hey, do you need some help? Like, seriously, I, I, it's not more complicated than that. So number four. So number four is the most common way to grow a firm, but most people do not do it strategically. And that is ask for referrals. Most people just wait for referrals to fall from the sky, but you can actually make it rain referrals if you're strategic and how you go about it. And so I'd like to get a little tactical on this because I've been de digging deep into the firms that have really high referral rates. And I'm like, what's making them get so many great referrals? So there's a few uh, components that contribute to how many referrals you actually get. So number one, shockingly, you actually have to deliver great service. I know everyone watching this actually does that, but you've got to have really well-defined deliverables. You've got to meet those deliverables. And ideally, you do a little bit more than you're required, but you don't allow scope creep to control your life. So that's number one. And the second thing is, is they always have a defined target base. And the reason that they do that is people like to talk and interact with people like themselves. So guess who manufacturers know? Other manufacturers. Guess who coaches know? Other coaches. Guess who doctors know? Other doctors. And so that allows them to be more strategic in asking for a referral. So they get this to go, hey, Dr. Bob, 
We've been working together for a little while now, six months. It's been great. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Fantastic. Well, listen, you haven't sent us a referral yet, which kind of surprises us. You, do you hate me? Do you hate what we do? And they're like, no, I love you. It's like, oh, awesome. So who do you know that's a doctor like yourself that you can make an introduction to? And so that script, that talk track that you can use in the context of a fractional CFO call, in the context of reviewing the PL, in the context of just checking in and asking and saying, hello, how are you doing? Happy birthday, <laughs> whatever it is. You can use that as a way to prompt them to be like, oh, you know, actually, Tim down the road, he was his bookkeeper just left and he's like super frustrated about the way his billing procedures are going. Like, actually, like, I'm going to CC you on him, uh, an email to him right now. And you can even give them the email script that you would like them to use to make their life even easier. Because again, like, if you want people to do what you want them to do, this applies to service delivery as well as asking for referrals. It applies to everything. Make their life easier. So you just go, hey, I'll tell you what, I'll even save you a little bit of time. I'll send you something you can literally copy and paste and send to him. And if you want to change it, feel free, but it'll give you 80, 90% of what, what I'd like you to say or like how you can position this so that it's really a, a great thing for him. Some people will take this a step further. I don't even think it's necessary. You can create an incentive program for your referral to be able to be like, oh, you know, I'll pay you. Uh, I think you just surprise them with something nice at the end of the year, right? Send them a gift, um, something that's really nice, reflective of the value of the client that you were able to sign from a result of that. And that goes a long way to being able to ask again next year and be like, oh, you got the referral gift at the end of the year. What did you think of it? By the way, do you know anyone else? And so you want to make sure that this is not one and done, but something that is a recurring regular process. Generally speaking, I wouldn't ask for referrals more than um, once every six months, generally speaking. However, there's another point on the fourth one here, which is when we ask for referrals, you can ask for them from clients, which is what we just discussed. And you can ask for them from your colleagues. And so if you ask for them from your colleagues, you want to be able to ask the right colleague. So if I'm a bookkeeper, I probably don't go to the other bookkeepers and say, hey, bookkeeper, would you like to send me bookkeeping work? And I see that done and I'm like, that's probably not gonna work. Sometimes it does because oftentimes people are like, oh, they like to brag. Like, I'm not taking any clients right now. And that's just a weird way of saying like, I'm really bad at recruiting, training and hiring other people. They're trying to brag, but like, you're just like, oh, I just don't have this skill. So I mean, fine, probably satisfied in some way or another, that's cool. But if you're trying to get consistent referrals from non-direct competitors, go to complementary service providers. So your financial planners, your uh, bookkeepers, if you offer tax services, your tax services, if you offer bookkeeping, your fractional CFOs, if you don't do fractional CFO services. And, and essentially what you do is you get to build this really strong network of people who do what you don't, and you all get to send business to each other. And if you really want to know how to make this actually work, the only way that this truly works, speaking from a lot of experience with uh, referral uh, partnerships, you've got to give them the thing they want first, which means tr don't go hands open, go with something in your hands. And so if you have a client that you know is prime for fractional CFO services or tax planning, and you don't offer that, and you're like, hey, you know, I've been looking at your books. I've been noticing you've been growing really well. I see a couple of really interesting things that I think could help you related to these services. But honestly, I don't really offer them. You cool if I make an introduction to someone that I think would be a great fit for this? And they're probably like, yeah, of course, that's not, like, thanks for thinking of me like that. You're looking out for me. You're being, I don't have my shirt on, proactive, right? I appreciate that. And then you go to that person and you go, hey, I got someone that I think is a great fit. Here you go. And by the way, I do this and this. If you ever come across, like if you need someone to help clean up the book so you can do a much better job as a fractional CFO, I'd love an opportunity. And so what you've done now is you've created my favorite word in marketing, reciprocity. And as soon as that reciprocity comes into play, you would probably get three to five times the number of referrals that you wouldn't have gotten otherwise because you actually gave first. You proved that you're someone that they would like to be associated with as opposed to a lot of the people who were just like, can you give me clients? So again, asking for referrals can be done strategically and you want to make sure that you, when you ask for them, whether it's in the context of the client relationship, you do so with the scripts that I just talked about. And you also want to be able to do it with your colleagues with the right context, both making sure it's complimentary service 
and that you can give first so that you can get later. And the fifth and final way uh, to grow your firm fast, and like I said, I, I promised that basically all of these would be free. You can accelerate this one with a little bit of money, but I'm going to talk about how to do it 100% for free, and then I'll talk very lightly about how to do it with a little bit of capital to speed up how many results it gets. So the fifth and final way to grow your firm fast is you reach out to people that you don't know, and you say hello and ask them if they would like some help. And that's um, not very hard to do, but if you wanna make it easier and give yourself a higher chance of success, what you wanna do is just like I said before, it's strategic, you reach out to a certain type of person. Ideally, aha, we're dream firms, your dream client, right? So that is knowing who you truly wanna work with. And a dream client will always be related directly to an industry or a niche or a niche, depending on what part of the country you're from. And so the reason I emphasize this is that if you were to just reach out blanketly to everyone and be like, do you need accounting? You're not going to be that successful. You, do you need tax help? You're not going to be that. You, you'll probably get a few people. I see a lot of people who make cold calls, just like random lists. And I'm like, if we just took an extra 30 minutes to understand who we should be calling and be like, hey, by the way, I work specifically with fill in the blank painters. I, I noticed that you're a painter. Uh, I help with accounting and tax specifically for people like you. Do you need some help? Probably not making phone calls, but if you just use that same sort of mental imagery, but you apply it to direct messaging, cold email, outbound email strategies, well, all of a sudden you can increase the size of your network dramatically in the target market of your choice. And so where currently a lot of firms have very little uh, market presence, you know, they're seen as a commodity. Uh, if you want to be seen as an expert, you have to be in demand. And the way you become in demand is you need more people of a certain type to become aware of you. And then that increases how many people, uh, how frequently people want to work with you. Also gives you the the opportunity to charge more premium price and a whole lot of other benefits. But you can do that 100% for free. Not, nothing stops you from getting a list of people. Literally, there are lists everywhere. Just use Google. And then you just reach out to them. Now, if you want to accelerate it, because eventually time becomes your enemy in essentially all growth strategies, which is why our fastest growing clients hire what we refer to as a lead generation specialist. It's called LGS internally. And that lead generation specialist, guess what their job is? Generate leads. It's literally in the title. So LGS. And so what they're doing is they're taking our proven scripts. They're taking our list generating methodology. They're taking our expert brand building philosophies, social media posts, everything. And they're accelerating how many people become aware of the firm owner or the firm and their expertise in the target market of their choice. And here, like I like to always just tie it back to some quick math. So doing it for free costs you your time. And while you're, it doesn't cost you any money, it does cost you something that you'll never get back, which is your time. If you want to do more of it, then you need to be able to take the physical embodiment of time, money, and give it to someone who can do the thing more than you can do it. Because guess what happens when you're good at the first four? You run out of time, right? You literally don't have time to do them anymore. Good problem to have. But if you want to keep growing, you need some way for more people to come into your funnel, book more calls with you. And so by simply just allocating 20 hours of effort per week for someone to do that, over a month, that's 80 hours of marketing being done for you. And even if you're paying that person $15 an hour, which I don't recommend, even if you were paying someone $15 an hour, Right, what is that? 15 times 20 or times uh, 80. So 15 times 20, 300 a week, three times four, that's 1200 bucks. The question is with 80 hours, will I make more or less than $1,200? 80 hours of effort. Can I sell, <laughs> can I get one S Corp return for $1,200? Probably 1500 should be your minimum, but you get my point. Can I do that? I hope so. Can I get one, two recurring clients for 500,000 bucks a month? You would think so. And well, maybe I don't get it that month. Do you think you get it with 160 hours? Of course. 
So the point here is like you can cover an, your entire marketing budget. And again, I, I don't even recommend paying $15 an hour for that position. You don't even need to, but that would give you 80 hours a month of marketing support for the rest of your firm's existence. That's how you grow your firm fast. Like you do all five of these things and you grow your firm really fast. And you don't even need to worry about the more complex things that are way more costly that actually are a little bit slower to both get set up, get implemented, and the cash you got to burn to be able to run them, such as paid advertising. But that's what I've got for you today. I hope you've enjoyed today's Dream Firm Spotlight. My name is Tyler S. Clark, co-founder of Dream Firms, where we believe you should wake up to a hyper-profitable accounting firm. I hope you enjoyed today's presentation and just walk away with one of these fast ways to grow your firm. And I'll look forward to seeing you on the next edition of Dream Firm Spotlight. And remember that only you can create your dream firm, but we are here to help you every single step of the way. Have a fantastic rest of your workday, and I'll talk to you all very soon.